Hello, hello, my lovely people. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's topic is extremely important for everyone to know. And I wish that even the kids would learn how to do that, right? Just a second, I'll switch my, my heating Good. so that we don't hear any sounds. So, how and why our emotions um, go into our body, how our emotions are manifested in our body, why that happens, and why not every emotion manifests in our body, right? So I'll cover all of these topics, and this is really important. So conventional uh, medicine, Western medicine, right, believes that um, there is a little connection between body and mind. Long ago, they believed there is no connection between body and mind, but now they believe that there is, but it's not that significant. So mostly you just have to fix the body and the mind, it's just the mind, right? So uh, the mind is so unexplained, so complex, right? You just go to the therapist to, to, to deal with that. Um, and I was raised like that as well. I was raised believing that if you have a physical symptom, you go to the doctor and you just, you know, get a prescri prescription drugs and you just fix the body. The fact that um, my illness happened six times a year didn't bother anyone, right? Uh, because you just get another prescription drugs and you just take it um, until the illness becomes chronic, right? That's what happened with my sinus infection, right? Or it happened with my skin problems. And I'll, I'll talk about skin problems and sinus infection and how and what can it mean um, if it's not resolved, right? So uh, when I started to learn about mind-body connection, every puzzle in my mind clicked. Every puzzle in my mind clicked, right? It's not like I stopped taking any um, prescription drugs if I needed to or that I became against, you know, conventional medicine. No, not at all. But I started to understand my body and mind better. I understood why I, I am stressed, how the stress is formed in our body, why it can become chronic, right, and never ending, and, and everything related to any emotional pain and physical pain and that they are connected. There is no other way you cannot go around it. Unfortunately, it would be so much easier if we could fix our mind and body, but no. So there is only two states of our mind-body, right? I'm safe and I'm not safe, right? So I'm safe, it means that you're happy, you're calm, you're relaxed, you're not in any emotional pain, no anxiety, no worry, right? So you're kind of in this flow of, of happiness, fulfillment, excitement, right? Uh, and it would be great if it could be like that all the time, but it's not, right? So, um, and there, are, uh, there is another state of being, of mind, right, and body. It's I'm not safe, right? So this is when your body goes into the fight or flight mode. And it's, I'm not going to talk a lot about it, because there are so many videos about it, right? We know that we are in it. If you're stressed, you know you're in a fight or flight mode, right? You don't, you just don't know why you're always in a fight or flight mode, why you have panic attacks and why you have physical symptoms, right? So uh, when you are in a fight or flight mode, all the blood in your body, because your mind is operating, right? How your body will work. It decide it's it's decides naturally right that it needs to protect you. Your body needs to run away because you are in a fight or flight mode. Uh, your mind doesn't understand yet that the threat can be just imaginary. It could be just your thought. It could be your unconscious trigger, right? Not just a real threat. Like for example, you see the fire and you run away from it, right? Or um, you see a threat, like, you know, you're almost, you know, crossing the road that there is a car, right? You are trying to protect yourself. You run away, you hide, right? You pull back. Um, and that's when your body, all the, all the blood goes into your muscles, into your big muscles. Like, because it needs, you need to run away or you need to fight back. That blood goes 
into your muscles from somewhere, right? So your body decides that, okay, you don't need the brain that much. You don't need this and this organ that much. You just need these organs, these muscles to run away. Like your heart, right? Your muscles. You don't need a uh, kidneys yet, right? Or you don't need, so it kind of takes away the blood from all the tissues and organs that are not that vital right now to your, uh, to your life, right? So this is what happens in a fight or flight mode. By the way, this is why you have a lump in the throat when you have a fear of public speaking or you have anxiety or you are in a conflict with someone, right? You cannot say anything. You have a lump in the throat because there is a blood restriction, right? Blood, blood flow restriction. So it's just the, just the function of your body. So when that happens, you have a couple of options. You either fight back, which means in adulthood with the imaginary threat, it means making a decision, right? You fight back, you make a decision. You run away, which is like you are suppressing it. You know, you're just like, I don't have an issue. The same happens with a physical symptom, right? You don't want to resolve it. I don't want to know. Or you just freeze, right? So you just kind of accept it. And especially when doctors tell you, oh, you know, it's probably, um, it's probably genetic, you know, like it's, I'm sorry, right? But you will have to live with it your whole life. So that's when you kind of come to the acceptance and you just don't know any, you don't do anything about it. You know, you might be taking some uh, medication, right? But it's not like you want to resolve it because it's so much easier to put the responsibility on something else and on not on your own healing, right? So this is what happens in a fight or flight mode with any situation. And that fight or flight mode happens in our life all the time. But the first time it happened in childhood, when in different situations, uh, your your teacher was yelling at you. Your parents were neglecting or abusing you. There were addicts, for example, right? So there are so many um, examples, right? I'm not going to go over them because uh, everyone is unique. So the situation will be unique to you, right? So when you get into this worry, this first sense of worry and fear, right? You get into this fight or flight mode. If the situation is not resolved, and in many cases, when you are a child, it's not resolved, right? Then the stress remains, right? Your body remains in that fight or flight mode because your body understands that there is a threat all the time. And that's when the, the, the stress and the emotions that you have are going into your body, it's just the re it's it's a normal reaction of your body. Your body needs to tell you, right? Your body is exhausted. The immune system is exhausted from being all the time in um, in the fight or flight mode, right? So uh, why how the stress is formed, right? The stress is formed when the situation is unresolved, right? So there is no solution to it when it's unexpected. So you haven't, you don't, you don't expect it, you don't expect it, it's isolated. So you have no one to talk to about it. You have no support. And I'm sure it will resonate with, with a lot of you. How many times in the childhood we had these stressful situations that we, we just didn't know how to, what to do about them, right? So we just shut it down. We suppressed it. When you suppress an emotional pain, right? Suppress this feeling of unfairness, you know, this feeling of loneliness, hopelessness, helplessness, whatever it was, right? That is an energy. That is an energy and that energy needs to come out. So it starts to kind of go into your body and your body starts to talk from that, you know, um, first of all, your blood is all, you know, like in your muscles, right? It's not, you don't have that, um, natural blood flow that kind of like nourishes every cell in your body, right? Oxygen as well goes into the vital, like into your breathing so you can ride away, right? So there's a lot of organs and tissues that don't get enough of oxygen and blood, right? So that they start to deteriorate, right? They start to get sick, right? 
uh, they start to to show some so you, then your body starts to show physical symptoms right so you have to understand that your thought and your emotion is an energy and if it's not coming out which is not when we are children most of the time we suppress and repress and shut down right um, just to survive or even in adulthood, if you had a stressful moment, right, and you didn't have a time to process it, you didn't have a time to, to talk, you didn't have a support, right, and you didn't make a decision, because stress is indecision, right, um, then it will go into your body. And the more chronic it is, the more long-term it is, the more complex the physical symptoms will be. That's why it's so hard for doctors to give you a clear diagnosis. Like they can give you a diagnosis, okay, you have a headache, right? Or you have an insomnia, or you have a um, hormonal disbalance, you have, um, you know, obesity, right? So any physical symptom, right? They can give you the diagnosis, but they don't cannot help you with the root cause because... They don't know when it happened, right? They just don't know. They can give you these symptomatic treatments that you can have. And symptoms, yes, you can treat the symptoms, but if the cause root wasn't resolved, right, it will still show up somehow. Maybe in this, in the same issue, or it will transform into another issue, right? So you, in order to break the cycle and in order to start to heal, because the only person who can completely 100% heal your physical symptom is your mind, is you, right? And if you don't take that responsibility, then it's your choice, of course. You will just, you know, you probably are okay with having these problems in your life, emotional and physical, right? Um, so when you have this thought cycle, right? Belief system cycle, right? The, the Like never ending, you need to break it at some point. And by breaking it, you will understand where is it coming from. So breaking the cycle, right, of these beliefs, how your mind and body works is the first step to understand your illness, your physical illness, right, so your physical symptom. For example, I had clients with back pain, right? And I'm, I'm not saying it's 100%. I'm never saying that back pain is a 100% psychological reason. No, no. It's a, it's, it's a combination of physical and psychological, right? And if you work in the combination, then it, you'll have results. If you don't, you'll not have results. So when you are with the back pain, for example, a lot of my clients are coming and they are these, um, you know, high achievers, right? Perfectionists putting so much on their shoulders. They even tell me, I put so much on my shoulder, but I'm always stiff here. I have problem in my shoulder, I have problem in my back, right? So our back is our kind of like a, you know, um, the main structure, right, of our body. So it holds our whole body, you know, it gives us this opportunity to walk, you know, to stand. So that, it, that will have a psychological reason if you have problems with your back, which means I, um, I have a lot of responsibility financially, right? I have a lot of a burden on my uh, shoulder, right? I'm carrying too much. Like literally, I'm carrying too much. That will be your bane, uh, back pain, right? Uh, many times, for example, weight issues, right? So obesity and weight issues, you create, like a person creates this either protective layers around themselves, right? They are protecting these layers because there was an abuse, there was an abuse, in the childhood, right? And they are protecting themselves. I have, I can't be seen. I cannot be attractive, you know, because if I'm attractive, something bad can happen, just like it happened when I was a child, right? So your mind comes up with these protective tendencies and strategies to protect you. Sometimes uh, access weight, right, or weight issues, problems, can um, be the cause of um, you um, wanting to be stronger, to be bigger, to be seen, like the opposite, right? Of not wanting to be seen. You, you're you small and you're not heard, your parents like ignore you, they don't pay much attention to you, so you decide, I have to be big, I have to be big to be noticed, to be seen, and then you start to eat 
or you eat the same but your body just accumulates and accumulates you know just for you to be bigger and bigger means stronger if your mind came up with this belief many times i had clients who were in the male environment at work and the main were dominant male were very men were very domineering right they were controlling right so she needed to be stronger she needed to be also like you know authoritative right so she um she started to gain weight right and she couldn't understand why but when we go to the root cause that strategy stops to have benefit for you right you understand like oh that's why i started to gain weight right and then the way they start to have less cravings right they have less um, they, they reduce the portions of their food, right? And that way they start to care for their body more and they start to lose weight, right? Or sometimes the weight just goes away when you understood the reason for that. IBS, for example, right? IBS is the digestion. How many times people say, I can't digest that situation? It's literally means like that. There is something unresolved that you're munching on. You cannot make a decision. You cannot digest that situation, right? You cannot forgive. This is a very big thing, right? Um, anger, right? Repressed anger can show up in, um, in your bones and joints and, for example, in arthritis even, right? The, the long-term, year, years-long suppressed anger can be in your bones and joints it's so deep right um skin problems right skin problems is the self-love self-acceptance right if if i'm rejected in childhood by my parents or by my peers right i don't accept myself and your body starts to come up okay if you don't accept yourself i'll make you not accept yourself and not love yourself with these kind of acne or skin problems, right? There are different other causes of the skin problems. It's just one of them, right? I always go with the client. There is always only you know what it is. And by guiding my clients, we are able to find out what caused this or that physical symptoms. So I hope this information was very helpful to you. And please... Uh, watch it, rewatch it, memorize these things because put that in your mind and then be more aware of your mind and body connection. You know, so this is your first step to become aware of your mind and body connection. From that point, life never goes backwards. Life will always change and change for the better. So bye bye. Love you all. Be healthy mentally and physically if you need my help in guiding you through the process right of discovering yourself uh, my information is in um, the description uh, i wish you all the best bye